There's a few things that I do want to talk about with the Philadelphia Eagles. Some Eagles updates for you. A little bit on Carson Wentz. A little bit on, obviously, some roster. Maybe some changes they could make. And, obviously, a new player that we might have to keep our eye on. Go to it. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. What is going on, guys? Your boy Joey Shakes, and to come to you guys with it right now. So, um, I want to give some updates on the Philadelphia Eagles. Just a, f- a few things that um, you know we, we need to talk about. And, and one, I want to get this out of the way because this is it. We're enjoying this win. We're enjoying this victory, being three and zero, winning twenty four to eight. And I just want to talk about something. Why we're so lucky to have Jalen Hurts. And I think the one thing we have to talk about is Carson Wentz. And it was at the end of the game, and I had to watch this. And I and I. I watched it. I, I watched the end of it, and then I saw something, and then I went to go check on NBC Philadelphia to look at like the post game stuff, which I do like watching that after every game on YouTube when they go live. I think they go live on that. Um, <clears throat> so at the end of the game, um, while the Commanders are getting their asses kicked, okay, Carson Wentz is smiling on the sideline and acting like there's just nothing going on. Like, nothing's going on. And I just say to myself, man, this guy has not changed, like, at all. He was laughing with a teammate on the sideline. Like, he didn't look pissed. He didn't look like he cared that he lost to a former team that he was drafted by. All the revenge that he wanted, all of what he wanted just to, you know, get one up on the Eagles and try to single-handedly beat us. And it didn't happen. Um I just looked at that, and I was like, if I was a teammate, I would be so pissed if I saw that. I'd be literally pissed, and they showed that on TV. They showed all of it. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, as I got to my phone, I wanted to watch NBC Philadelphia when they go live on, you know, players come back to the locker room. Then they're like, oh, let's go take a look at Carson Wentz's press conference. I didn't look for the press conference. It just popped up. They wanted to talk about it. And... As he always does, says the same thing. We're going to get better. We're going to get better. It just brought me back. I just said to myself, and I put out this tweet. I put up a tweet and saying, this guy hasn't learned anything. This guy took the easy way out. Didn't listen to the coaches. Didn't listen to the ownership. Didn't listen to the front office. Requested a trade. Took the easy way out. Was gifted two really good offenses when getting traded to the Colts and obviously getting traded from there after a year to the Washington Commanders to an even better offensive roster. Okay. It, it's I'm so thankful to have Jalen Hurts here. It, it just makes me more thankful that we got a quarterback that knows, you know, that works really hard and works from the ground up um, to be the underdog and to build himself up and, and to – Shut everybody up of what everyone's been saying about Jalen Hurts since last year, since he was here and he had, you know, he's had the full year start last year. But unfortunately, you know, it just, you know, it it was a, pro- a progressing year for Jalen Hurts. And really before last year in 2020, he played four to five games. So early last year, I couldn't really criticize him that much because technically he was still a rookie. He was still a rookie early last year, still learning a lot. It was a very young team. First year head coach, first year defensive coordinator. A rook, pretty much still a rookie quarterback. So a lot of mistakes were going to be made last year, and a lot of mistakes were made. I think Jalen Hurts did progress, but there were still flaws on his reads, his progressions. Okay, being a natural passer, you know, working on that deep ball accuracy. There was so much more, you know, that he had to, you know, had to learn and he had to work at. Going into this off season, this past, you know, this past off season. Uh, he worked his tail off since the end of the 2021 season. And man, are we getting a show. The success that I thought that he was going to get. And look, I said to myself that Hertz was not going to. I thought Hertz was going to play like this middle of the season. That That's what I, I thought by the middle of the season, maybe a first quarter into the season, maybe seven games in, six games, something like that. He would have played like this at that time, and surprisingly enough, and he has proved me wrong in that in that way. And I got to say, his determination, work ethic, mindset, blocking out the outside noise, and he hears things probably most likely, and that's why he kind of shows us on the field when uh, just how just when he scores or when things do happen, he 
crosses his arms. Or he, he knows what everyone's saying about him, that he cannot be a starting quarterback. So, And like I said, it's only the third game. It, we're moving forward, and it, it makes you appreciate having Jalen Hurts on the team that much. After watching how Carson Wentz played, how he literally pounded him into the ground, and he didn't prove a damn thing that he he looks the exact same as he left in two thousand you know, as he, you know, walked after uh nineteen. I mean or after twenty, after two thousand twenty and walked out of here. So uh he hasn't been the same after that ACL A L C L his athleticism. He he looks broken. I mean he looks broken down. And I think the Eagles got into their heads. The more they were uh into his head, the more that they were hitting him, the more he was a deer in headlights, the more he was trying way too hard and um he really didn't have a chance to play hero ball because he <laughs> He had no chance to make a throw from the pocket, which is kind of crazy. Um, but I just kind of want to say that because it just makes you it makes you appreciate what you have. Um, and from that guy, not uh, the same press conference, the same things are said at the press conferences, like you used to say at our press conferences, post games, after the games. Like it, it's just a, I, I just it's it's crazy. It's just nuts. And uh, the direction we're going right now is a- absolutely fascinating and. Um, building around Jalen Hurts and and just giving him weapons to see what he could do. And, man, what a difference this offense is taking. And um, with Jalen Hurts' work ethic, it starts with the quarterback. I mean, that's it. I mean, you can have the best offensive line. You can have the best receivers. I mean, look at Wentz with the receivers he has. He can do a lot with those receivers, but he can't, unfortunately. Um so I just want to kind of mention it. You just got to appreciate it and, and the work ethic and, and what Jalen Hurts is bringing to the table and um, not being cocky, just being very confident and having that swag and, you know, just determining. It's all business. I mean, it's all business. Uh, he doesn't take anything lightly. He doesn't waste any time. This is his passion. This is what this is what he wants to do, and he wants to be a franchise quarterback for this team, and hopefully he gets that contract. Um, but other than that, that's kind of want to just lay myself on that. Cause after seeing the press con- the post game from Wentz that they showed, I wasn't even looking for it. They literally showed it on NBC Philadelphia. Let's see what Carson Wentz had to say at this press conference. I was like, okay. And that was it. Um, secondly, I want to talk about Boston Scott <clears throat> as of right now. I want to talk about Boston Scott and I feel like they really have to make a change on special teams since Boston Scott gets what a few carries a game. Nothing crazy. Um, he needs more on his belt right now. Cal, uh, as of right now, with with Britton Covey, like I don't know what they're going to do with him. They're either they're going to keep him on the roster, put him on practice squad, or they're going to flat out just get rid of him. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what the plan is. I put him back on practice squad so he just learns more. Maybe he'll be uh, some type of returner down the road. I'm not even thinking about him as a wide receiver yet. Um, but why is it then since Boston Scott has been here, since he is like the Darren Sproles lookalike 2.0 type player that they have never put him on punt returns? I don't know what the case is with it because when he was with the Saints before we, before we ended up signing him, he was a special teamer. I think he did punt returns and kick returns. Yeah, I think he did. At least I knew he did punt returns. I could be wrong, but I, I thought I saw him on punt returns, and he was a good special teamer for the Saints for a bit. And the Eagles have never thrown him there, and I don't know why. Do they not have any interest? Do they? I mean, I think Scott would be perfect. You know, with Britton Covey, these three games, it's he's taken lateral steps. He's, he's ran backwards. Even he had the most room in this against the Washington Commanders, he had the most room on the field today. There was one punt where, like, I mean, he doesn't get low, and unfortunately, he's got a small lower body. He's just, he's five, what is he, five, seven, five, eight, 170 pounds, whatever it is. He's very small. Um, with Boston Scott, he's got a big lower body. Kind of, Darren Sproles, like, those small guys in the NFL, those really small guys in the NFL that have those big lower bodies, they can get it done because they can take the hits. Um, Covey just can't, he gets touched once uh, he's on the ground. I mean, he can't break anything. He can't, you know, find the space, I guess. Uh, it's just, he, he just needs more time. I think it's showing to himself that he needs more time. Lucky for him. He had this much of an opportunity and maybe it'll make him work harder for it, uh, when the time comes. Um, so I think Boston Scott or somebody, I mean, I looked up, they put Devontae Smith for one punt return. I got really nervous and I didn't think they were going to keep him there, but. 
I just said to myself, they just want somebody there to get some yards. They were punting from their side of the field, and you know we want a, someone of a good return to have good field position for the offense. So I would really start to make some changes here. Number one, I mean, by next year, I want Michael Clay gone. The special teams coordinator has to go. He just sucks. Um, you know, I don't think the blocking is good on special teams. This, but I'm telling you, there's going to be a game down the road where special teams is going to make us lose. We're going to lose a game because of special teams. It's just bound to happen. Um, so whether they bring Devin Allen up, whether they bring Boston Scott and Boston Scott should just have a bigger role. Boston Scott should have a bigger role. If he's not, if he's getting like, you know, maybe five carries, not even that a game, you know, if they even use him for certain plays, um, I would put him on punt return. I don't see why not. Kick return, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not saying to put him on kick return as well, but you could if you wanted. And I think Boston Scott would benefit from it, but maybe they don't want to because he's a key, you know, a key core player to this running back rotation, and they don't want him to take an unnecessary hit. Kind of like I don't want Quez Watkins to be on kick returns. I think Covey was on kick returns as well. So they took Quez Watkins out of there. I think they're starting to be a little bit smarter with Quez. They're not going to put him on kick returns, special teams anymore. And he's not a special team or that's just the way it is um, with him. So um, I think this would be a really good idea if they could at least try to do something because I, this, this special teams is the worst. Um, the whole entire special teams is the, is the worst position unit um, on this team. So that's what I want to say about Boston Scott. And I think that would be a really good change for him. And I think it would help us get our offense at the field position. I, I don't feel like it's like, look, I'm, I'm happy that hurts is taking that step forward. And I mean, we'll go from the 10 to the 12 yard line and move all the way downfield, but it's unnecessary when you just can make a move or just make a little bit of a change. You have time to make a change on this right now and get things acclimated uh, to get our special teams back on track. We haven't had good special teams really since 2015 and before that. I mean, really, since Josh Huff, um, uh, Darren Sproles. I mean, we, we've had some good special. Even Brian Westbrook was a, a guy that did special teams, a guy that, you know, catch the ball out of the backfield, made big plays. You know, like you, you sometimes, you know, you don't want to use every skill player for, for special teams, but – for someone that's not getting as many pan, you know, as many handoffs as Boston Scott is really not getting, give him some type of bigger role. Do something with him. I think it would be the smart thing to do. And lastly, Grant Calcaterra like just showed up in this game. Like I don't know what the game plan was. And look, these tight ends are very different because even with with Jack Stahl, Jack Stahl is mostly a blocker. I think he caught one one or maybe two catches. I think it was one catch today. He's not a receiving tight end. He is a he does the dirty work. He blocks. It is what it is. I'm, I'm not a fan of to, a toe guy. Not a fan of him. Uh, you know, Tyree Jackson's on IR right now. He's probably not even going to play. This would have been his second year playing tight end. So next year will be his second year playing tight end uh, pretty much when he hits the field. And, you know, he trains for a whole offseason once he's done rehabbing that ACL. Greg Calcaterra catches a 40-yard, you know, runs for 40 yards. I mean, fantastic, great balance on the sideline um, and shows a lot of speed. Calcaterra could run really good. Um, I don't think that I don't think Washington was really ready for him because, you know, I mean, I didn't think he was going to get a snap whatsoever. This guy was hurt since July 30th with a hamstring and he didn't get playing time until until the third preseason game, the final preseason game where he actually got some reps. He looked good. And I said, eh, he's not going to make the team just because eh, he's just not going to make it. He just hasn't had enough time. Because when guys miss so much valuable time throughout training camp and the joint practices and all of that, especially Nick Sirianni values those joint practices and Calcaterra can't play. He played in one preseason game and they want to keep him. And I can see why. So keep your eye out on Grant Calcaterra to see if he gets more work. Because other than Dallas Goddard, who's our other receiving tight end other than Dallas Goddard right now? Nobody. Really nobody. I think Calcaterra could be that number two. The Eagles could have a gem here. Eagles could have a big gem in Grant Calcaterra. So we'll see what happens. And this is a guy that played with Hurts at Oklahoma. You know, he had some concussion issues, and then he went to uh, – then he transferred to SMU. So it was nice, you know, how he's always trying to put players that – you know, Hertz kind of played with, you know, Kennedy Brooks, you know, guys like that are acclimated to them playing together when they were uh, on a certain team or something like that, which is cool. Um, but, you know, let me know from you guys what you guys think about Grant Calcaterra and do you think he'll make a difference? You think they'll put him in more games now? Even after that, maybe it was an eye opener for the Eagles. Like, oh man, this this guy could run, this guy could catch, he could play. Um, consistent consistently, I don't know. I mean, I got to see more. It was one rep, uh, but I really liked it. 
And um, we need that number two. We're try, still trying to find that number two. And look, I think you, like you said, you could, they kept three. They keep, they usually keep three active tight ends on the roster, um, on the active roster. So you have stalls, the blocker, and maybe we'll get one reception or a couple, whatever. It's not going to be much because uh, you're not trying to throw to him all the time. And I think you can, if Goddard needs to step out for a game or if Goddard, you know, needs that reliable number two behind him that can go out for catches if they want to do double tight end sets, you know, it just depends what they want to do. But Grant Calcaterra is definitely somebody that we're definitely going to keep our eye on. I liked his tape and uh, thought he had a good preseason game. And I didn't think he was just, I mean, I looked up and he caught a ball. Like, who the hell is that? And I'm like, that's way too fast to be Jack Stahl. It's got to be somebody else. And it was Grant Calcaterra. So um, was really happy about that in the end. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about how Carson Wentz acted at the end of the game. Obviously, the Boston Scott situation, should they do something with him? Or just another idea in general for special teams for return specialists because this, this is not going to go good. We're going to lose the game this year because of special teams. We're going to have that moment. We almost had that moment today where he, he you know, Covey muffed the punt today and he recovered it, thank God. Um, we don't want that to happen. We I don't want to be stuck between the 10 to 20-yard line every single drive. We, we got to do better than that. We got to do better and teams are going to kick teams are going to kick our way because they know if they can kick the ball between the 10 to 20 we're not going to even get we're not even going to get five six yards out of it sometimes it's that bad as of right now so other than that that's pretty much it let me know what you guys think and i'll see you guys on the next one shakes what up follow slide peace out guys peace